Up till this point in the series, we have already taken a look at our OR gates and our AND gates. So hopefully you are able to see you know, some patterns, some similarities between these two types of gates when implemented with transistors. And well, once you have those pictures in mind, today we're going to move on to see even more familiar patterns. With AND and OR out of the way, we can now move on to their cousins, the NAND gate and the NOR gate. Starting, of course, first with the NOR gate. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. Yes, it's finally time for us to, well, play around with some slightly more advanced gates. Now, normally we would think of a gate, you know, like a NOR gate as an OR gate attached to a NOT gate. So, you know, when we're talking about this in terms of logic gates without looking at the transistors, that's kind of the best we can do. We do have to think of it as sort of two gates strung together. But when it comes to talking about transistors, turns out you don't really have to see things this way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with actually, you know, building an OR gate and then sticking a NOT gate after it to invert the output. But turns out with transistors, you don't actually have to do that. A NOR gate is a brand new beast and, well, it can be implemented with two transistors still. So yeah, interesting idea, right? When it comes to transistors, we actually have more expressive power. Now, we're going to start as usual with a recap of what a NOR gate actually is. The idea is fairly simple. It acts like an OR gate, but the output is inverted. So yeah, since an OR gate produces a true result as long as any one input is true, then the NOR gate must basically do the opposite. The only case in which the output is 1 is when both inputs are 0. For any other case, whenever any input goes high, the output must become 0. Nothing too special here, right? A NOR gate is literally an OR gate with inverted outputs. So with this in mind, we can now move on to our simulations. For the purposes of this episode and the next, I will be comparing that particular gate that we are interested to look at with its counterpart, its non-inverted counterpart. This is because, well, these tend to look very, very similar. In fact, here we have a PNP version of our OR gate sitting right beside the PNP version of our NOR gate. And as you can see, it's the same kind of transistor, right? It's both PNP, and the layout is very much similar. The only difference is we have now shifted our pole resistor from the top to the bottom, we have shifted our output location from the top to the bottom as well. Now, you may be tempted to think that we are basically using our transistors in reverse now, but that is not the case. Our emitter, in this case because it's PNP, that is still connected to our high state, so that's fine, right? This isn't a case of what is known as reverse bias. No such problem here, we're not connecting it the wrong way around. So, when both inputs are zero, what's going to happen is, well, our high state it's going to go right through, it's going to overpower our pull down resistor, we will have a 1 as an output. When we flip any one of these on, what's going to happen is we're going to cut away that connection. As a result, the pull down takes effect and we're going to get 0 at our output. So yeah, this is basically your NOR gate, right? The only time you're going to get a 1 as the output is when both inputs are false. Now, interestingly, the NOR gate doesn't only resemble the OR gate. We're going to move on now to our schematic, and you'll be surprised to see what else it is similar to. Now, do you remember this picture? This is our NPN version of our N gate, and as it turns out, this is so similar to what we've just created. The only thing we need to change is to replace the two transistors, like so. When we actually switch them from NPN to PNP, we convert our N gate to a NOR gate. This shouldn't look too different from what we've just seen in Logisim, right? These are our two transistors that are connected in series. They go straight to high, they're pulled down to low. And yeah, we have an LED on that side. So let's see what happens in our usual state. Both our switches are open, both our bases go to low. And for a PNP transistor, when a base is low, it means the switch is closed, right? There is actually a connection. And yeah, that makes sense because, well, it allows our high state to flow through and light up our LED. As long as any button is pressed, the connection is broken. 
and as a result, the positive terminal of the LED is pulled down to ground. It's as simple as that, so let's go ahead to our breadboard and see this in action. So in fact, this time let's start a little bit differently. These are our NPN transistors. We are in fact having an N gate over here. So if I press down both, the LED here lights up. Right, so this is just to show you that it's the exact same circuit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull out these two transistors right here. So yeah, pardon my giant hand for a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace them at the exact same positions with our PNP transistors instead, which I have here. So now we have our PNP transistors in place in the exact same position. Of course, because it's PNP right now, we have collectors on the right, emitters on the left. And yeah, the idea is pressing down on any one of these buttons will cause the light to switch off. So this has become our NOR gate. To take a closer look at our physical setup, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Basically, as I've said, emitters on the left, collectors on the right. We have two current limiting resistors going into our bases fed by the two switches here. The leftmost emitter is fed from our power source and our rightmost one brings us back to ground through a pull down resistor. So yeah, here we go, right? This is a NOR gate that is basically adapted or modified from an end gate. I think after a while you're gonna start to appreciate the same couple of patterns that keep on appearing because that's what's happening here. This is the NPN version of our NOR gate and as you can see we are doing the same thing. We're just flipping it around the same way we've flipped around the PNP version. In this case our gates are parallel to each other and what we've flipped around is our pull resistor right from pulling down to pulling up as well as the location of our output. So yeah, this one may be clearer if we were to actually sort of remove the pull resistor first which is something I didn't do previously. Again, this is not reverse bias. We have our emitters at the bottom right going down the ground. We have our collectors at the top which will be collecting from our high state. The idea is when both are zero then this chunk is basically not connected to anything at all. That is why we use our pull up resistor to make it go up to 1. As long as any is switched on, right, any one of these at all, we now have a complete connection between ground and our output. And since there is no resistor, it is more direct connection, so our output goes low. Yeah, that's the idea, right? That's basically, well, the entire picture of how this works. Again, let's jump over and take a look at our schematic. And yet again, we have another sort of mirror to our end gate. This is the PNP version of our end gate. And all we need to do to derive a NOR gate out of this is to change over the transistor to an NPN transistor. Everything else is exactly the same, right? We have our parallel connection, we have our pull up resistor, as well as our LED sort of high up. Let's see how this works. When the switches are open, this causes the two transistors to also act like open switches. As a result, there is no way for ground to sort of come over to our LED, right? Our LED will get pulled up high and it switches on. Anytime we close a single switch, we are basically, well, closing a switch here and allowing our ground to flow through. This overpowers our pull up and our LED will switch off. Let's take a look at our breadboard. So again, we are starting off with our PNP end gate, right? So, well, these are our PNP transistors. When we press down both, the LED lights up. So we're going to, again, remove these two and replace them with our NPN transistors in the exact same place. And just like that, we have created ourselves a NOR gate. So again, your NOR gate using NPN transistors is exactly the same as your N gate with PNP transistors. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here, right, to see the actual setup. Since these are NPN, our emitters are on the left side, and that is the side that basically goes through your LED to ground. The left side takes on high through a pull-up resistor, and yeah, it goes directly to ground over here. The two transistors are facing each other parallel, and the base is driven by each one of these switches. As long as any one of them are depressed, the LED goes off. So that is your typical NOR gate behavior. 
And there you go, that has been your NOR gate implemented with both NPN and PNP transistors. Hopefully you can sort of see how there is this sort of inversion, right? It's the same circuit, but just flip around. Um, yeah, when we move on to our next episode with the NAND gates, you'll realize it's basically the same thing. Anyway, that's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.